Today we're going to be reviewing the all new Kia Forte. Now while mass media will praise this vehicle for being the ultimate rental car, we're going to be taking a look under the hood and underneath the vehicle to see what's inside and how it works. Now we're going to start underneath the hood where we have Kia's NU 2 liter 4 cylinder engine and one of their first CVT transmissions situated transversely for front wheel drive. Looking at the layout, we've got the engine slightly on the passenger side, the coolant and windshield washer fluids at the front here. On the driver's side we have the battery, the ECU, the fuse box and air box on top of that CVT transmission. Now taking a look at the top of the engine, Kia is nice enough to give you these two hooks here to make it easy for you to pull out the engine when it fails just after warranty. Now at the top of the engine we have the four ignition coils with the spark plugs easily accessible down below. We have this plastic valve cover here with the PCV valve at the back and this engine takes 5W20 weight oil which is pretty easy to find. Now this engine is just port injected, there's no direct injection here so we've got the gas line that simply comes into this fuel rail and goes into the four fuel injectors here. Now like many vehicles a low pressure fuel pump is located underneath the rear seat and that doesn't mean that this engine is not technically advanced. Underneath the PCV hose here we have an EGR system that will recirculate exhaust gases from the back into the intake to be reburned. At the front here we have the variable charge solenoid which is responsible for creating turbulent flow as the air enters the engine for better air fuel mixing. And at the bottom here we have the variable intake solenoid. Now the air intake solenoid is going to activate this lever underneath here and that's going to move the flaps inside of the intake plenum to shorten the intake runner length. And speaking of the air intake system we have cool air that comes in through this duct over here. It then goes down into the air resonator, comes up through this air box to get filtered out. We have the mass airflow sensor here, a smaller resonator over here, a drive-by wire throttle body here, before the air then enters this giant plastic intake plenum to go into the engine to be burned. Now accessing the air filter on this car is pretty easy. Just pop off two clips, remove the air box, and then just reach in and pull out the filter. Now with the air intake system removed, you can see we've got clear access to the left hand side of the engine here and some of the components underneath this giant wiring harness. We've got the throttle body located under here, only 13,000 kilometers and this thing's already dirty. And we've got the EGR valve located up here and the EGR cooler integrated into this water temperature control assembly where the upper radiator hose goes into. Now the EGR system draws a little bit of exhaust gases through a small tube from the exhaust manifold into the EGR EGR valve here and then gets cooled off and sent through this tube down into the intake to be reburned. Now underneath the exhaust manifold we have the small tube that comes out for the EGR system before going out to the cooler. Now just a little bit north of that throttle body is the EVAP purge solenoid and its line that goes into the intake. Here's a look at the air intake resonator where air goes in here and comes back out here and the reservoir is just a big box inside of the bumper. Now on the passenger side of the engine underneath this cover here we have a timing chain which is great because you don't need to service it for the life of the engine. Now inside of here we have the intake cam camshaft and at the back here we have the exhaust camshaft and both of these have variable valve timing respectively. Now both of these variable valve timing solenoids are controlled through oil pressure. We have the variable force solenoid here that controls that oil pressure. We have the intake solenoid over here and the exhaust solenoid at the back over here. Now also on this side of the engine are their drive belts. We have the alternator located at the top here. The AC compressor is located further down at the bottom. There's an idler pulley here and then at the back here we have the tensioner which you get out with a wrench there. You swing it up and then you can get this drive belt off. Now removing the alternator isn't so bad. There's three bolts you have to remove on the bottom here and then a single bolt at the back here in order to remove it with the idler pulley. Now one thing Kia has done right is the placement of the ECU right near the firewall behind the battery and the air box. Therefore it's not as easy to get crushed in a collision up at the front here but you still maintain a nice short wiring harness to the engine. We've also got the fuse box at the front here. Now the cooling system in this Kia is a mix between tradition and new technology. On the side here we still have a belt driven water pump but inside of here we have an electronically controlled thermostat. We have a coolant jug over here and the radiator cap off to the side here. Now the water pump is kind of difficult to access and that's because there's barely an inch of clearance between the engine and the inner frame. Here we have the bolts that need to be removed in order to get this pulley off and then you can remove the four bolts that hold it to the engine. But there really isn't much room to work there. And that's kind of unfortunate because on this side the transmission has at least three inches of clearance between the frame and the transmission so Kia could have just moved the entire assembly over an inch or two to give us more clearance to work on that side. Even from underneath the access to the water pump is pretty tight. I could barely get my hands in there. If they had just moved that water pump a little bit lower it would have been easier to access. Anyway moving away from the water pump we have the lower radiator hose over here that goes into this plastic housing and this is what houses the electronic thermostat. Now the operation of that thermostat is quite interesting. It's just a standard thermostat at the bottom here with a piston encased in this wax membrane that melts when the coolant reaches operating temperature. However the ECU can decide when to light 
light up this heating element to warm up that wax to allow coolant flow a little bit earlier. Now the only downside to an electronic thermostat is you need Kia's diagnostic tool in order to open it up to bleed the system. Now the upper radiator hose on this side has been rerouted to the radiator cap to be in the middle to clear for the air box. The hose then continues over here to the temperature control assembly for the coolant which integrates the upper radiator hose, the EGR cooler, the coolant temperature sensor as well as the heater core hoses and the bypass hose to the other side. Now up at the front here we have the electronically controlled radiator fan. Now the radiator is held on by bushings so the next time your mechanic says you need bushings it's true. On the back of the engine by the firewall we have the hot and cold lines that go to the heater core. We've also got the low and high pressure lines that go to this expansion valve before going into the evaporator inside the climate control box. Now the exhaust manifold in this car is fairly straightforward being a four cylinder. We have a single steel manifold with an integrated catalytic converter, oxygen sensor here that goes into that flex pipe down below. Then the exhaust goes to the secondary catalytic converter, a central muffler, and then out the tailpipe to the back. It'll then come through this square shaped muffler at the back here and then out the tailpipe. Now this one does not have dual exhaust, just got an empty plastic panel here where you would put the left muffler. Now this car has two major engine mounts, one on the passenger side and one on the driver's side underneath the battery tray that do all the heavy lifting. And underneath the vehicle we have the third engine mount. Now this one isn't structural, it just prevents rotation and torsion. That sucks, Kia doesn't give you any jack points underneath the front here. Now underneath the new Kia Forte you can see that everything is fairly flat and covered with plastic except for the exhaust. And that's good for fuel economy because it gives you good airflow as well as it prevents any salt water from splashing up on vital components causing them to rust. Now one thing I really like is you don't have to remove these plastic covers to access the oil filter and the oil drain plug when doing an oil change. Now with the engine under cover removed you can see we have clear access to the transmission on this side and the engine over on this side. Now the oil pan itself is fairly accessible. We have the drain plug here and the standard canister style oil filter here. Now from underneath here it's pretty easy to access the AC compressor should you need to change it out. Now on this side of the radiator support we have the AC condenser and pretty much a giant crumple zone in and behind the bumper. Now in and behind the crank pulley we have the oil pump and it's integrated inside of the timing cover and it comes together as an assembly. That's a pretty deep oil pan for such a little engine. Now the oil circuit in this engine starts at the oil pan where oil is drawn up by the oil pump in the timing chain cover. It's then pushed through the oil filter to lubricate the crankshaft bearings and then up to the camshaft bearings. It then makes its way to each oil control valve to control the variable valve timing. Now underneath the air intake box we have the CVT transmission. At the top of it we have the manual gear selector. There's no electronic selector here. There's a grounding cable here. We have the wiring harness that controls it all. Then further down that we have the cooler which takes coolant from the engine and circulates it through this block over here to keep it nice and cool. Now taking a deeper dive we have the fill port for the transmission here and the check port for the transmission here. So basically you keep filling up the transmission until it starts coming out of the check port and then you know you got enough fluid in there. Underneath the transmission we have the drain plug and the fluid check plug and a big sticker on the transmission pan telling you not to change the transmission fluid but to change the entire transmission itself. That's right, that means if your transmission is acting up, there's no servicing this CVT, you gotta replace the entire thing. We've also got the access panel for the torque converter bolts when you need to drop this transmission to change it out. Now the starter is located at the front of the transmission where it meets the engine underneath the intake manifold. Now there's a bunch of wires and stuff that need to be removed in order to access one of the bolts from the top here. Now from underneath you can see the starter more clearly with the other bolt that holds it on. Now the back of the transmission in this housing we have the differential and the two CV shafts that go out to either wheel. Now the valve body on this CVT is inside of the pan. Behind the wheel of the new Kia we have a McPherson style front suspension that connects up to a steel steering knuckle. We have the CV axle here, the inner and outer tie rods here, as well as the stabilizer link that connects at the bottom here to the top of the strut. Now the lower control arm are just made of stamped steel. We have the ride and handling bushings here that are pretty easy to access in order to change this control arm out. Now the lower ball joint is thankfully bolted on which is easy for replacement, no need for a press, with a single nut over here and three bolts on the control arm. Now the front hubs on these are pretty easy to replace, just a bolt on design. No need for a press here. Now while this style of suspension wouldn't give you the best handling, it is fairly simple and easy to work on when components wear out. Now the back here we have a twist beam style semi-independent suspension and that's really where Kia cheaped out in order to give you a bunch of other features. Now what's good about this system is it's really simple. You just have a single twist beam that goes over to the other side and connects both knuckles and two bushings, one on this side and one on the other side. Those are the only bushings that are prone to wearing out. Now the top here we have the shock absorber and the coil spring where it joins down to the torsion beam. You can see that the advantage of this design is it's fairly compact, doesn't take up much room compared to a multi-link design. Now while all that space could be better used on this vehicle, 
the disadvantage of this design is handling because both of these wheels are now dependent on each other when cornering. Now replacing the rear bearings on these are pretty easy, just four bolts and it should come right out. And here's what the rear suspension looks like from underneath. Now you'll notice that there's no sway bar running from side to side and that's just because the sway bar is basically just a torsion beam. Now besides emissions components there really isn't much underneath here and there's a lot of wasted space so I'm thinking they're either planning a hybrid model and extend batteries back here or a GTS model with independent rear suspension. Now the braking system of this Kia is fairly traditional. We have the master cylinder here and the brake booster that takes its vacuum from the engine through this hose over here in and behind the throttle body. Now the master cylinder sends its hydraulic pressure over to the ABS actuator here which is responsible for traction control, stability control as well as autonomous braking features on this vehicle. Now the front brakes on the new Kia are nothing to sneeze at, just a simple floating single piston caliper at the front here on a disc rotor. I like the fact that they put a spring on the brake line here in order to protect it. Now to all you new Kia owners, make sure you take these screws out as soon as you get your car because they're going to strip out on your first brake job. Now the rear brakes aren't much different, we have a single piston caliper at the rear here on a disc rotor, not bad for a rental car, and good old mechanical hand brakes, no electronic parking brakes here. Now the steering on this vehicle is electric with the motor integrated further up the steering column. Here we have the pinion where it joins the rack which sits on top of the subframe. And here inside the steering column you can see the electric power steering motor and his computer underneath here. Now underneath the vehicle we have a plastic gas tank and we have the lines that lead over to the charcoal canister and a little air filter over here. Now we know that Kias typically give you a lot of features for the price point. Now we're going to take a look to see if where they might have cut costs. Now out back we are missing a spare tire but instead they give you an air pump. And of course there's that rear twist beam suspension which is much cheaper to make. Now taking a look behind the driver's side headlight you'll notice that the plastic here is pretty thick and durable and that's because it plays an integral role in holding up the radiator support so the front end is kept intact. The radiator support itself is also composite plastic but it's really well reinforced and pretty solid. You got these webs on the inside here and this I-beam kind of design which is going to make it pretty good for small impacts. However any larger impacts are going to crack it right away instead of bending like metal and you can't bend it back. At least it's just a bolt-on replacement and you don't need welding. Now underneath the radiator the support is really flimsy and there's no other cross members that go through either side. That's why there's no jack points at the front. At least the subframe at the back is kind of chunky. I wish they had extended it across the front. Not too much a fan of this plastic radiator union in the front. I feel like it can just snap off pretty easily with the lightest bump. I like how they gave the battery a little cardboard jacket to keep it warm in the winter. Now one thing I don't like about this design is the placement of the turn signals in the hit line of the bumper. One little scrape on a parking lot marker and your Kia turns into a BMW with no turn signals. The same thing follows true at the rear. One little bump against your mom's parking garage and all your blinker fluid is going to drip out. A lot of you concerned with the sheer amount of plastics in new cars today. Think of it this way, everything that's black here is plastic and if this were to light on fire you'd be left with just the block and the transmission which you could put as a desk ornament or make a little coffee table. Now the entire engine cover is just hard plastic, this is all the sound deadening material that you get. Kia actually includes a tow hook with this vehicle. When was the last time you seen that on a Corolla? Now in all honesty there's not a lot of bad things to say about the build quality of this Kia underneath the hood. It's actually a little bit better than most modern Toyotas. As a matter of fact it seems that everything laid out here is the exact same thing that it would be in a Toyota Corolla even down to these little push fasteners that Lexus used to use many years ago. It seems like someone's been copying the right answers to their homework. And that's pretty much a wrap on the mechanicals of the 2019 Kia Forte. Make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next car review is going to be and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Now in every part I'm finding that there's a Hyundai and a Kia badge stamped on almost everything and that really goes to show that it's just a partnership between the two companies as opposed to Toyota owning Lexus. I wouldn't be surprised if you pulled off this Kia badge and found a Hyundai and Kia badge underneath.